Welcome to part 11 of my Western Roman Empire campaign. At the age of only zero, the young Octavius ascends the Emperor throne and now has the task of holding the Empire together. But he's clearly too young to make important decisions or negotiate with vassals. The people are also skeptical of their new Emperor and so it happens that two great vassals rebel against him. Now, the remaining royal generals must do their best to save the Roman Empire from complete collapse. So welcome to Crusader Kings 3, The Fallen Eagle. Once again, the Roman Empire is in big trouble, and a defeat by one of the rebellious factions would mean massive losses. But when I looked at the map, I had to think about the crisis of the 3rd century, and Aurelian's wars, because, like him, the West and Syria were rebelling at the same time. And in order to prevent the downfall of the Roman Empire, it was now necessary to win these wars. The Eastern faction had already won some war points, so I decided to take the risk and divide my army. The Pontic capital was not far from Constantinople and I hoped that the conquest of their capital would bring me enough victory points to give me a little more control over these wars. In addition, the enemy's main army was far away from the Pontic capital, which should enable me to attack without problems. My main army would conquer Dacia in the meantime, and then continue to support the army in the east. But now, it's time to execute the plan, or fail trying to do so. And so, I sent a third of my army to the east. At the same time, I was able to negotiate an alliance with the king of a set campaign. Arset Campan. Arsacid Campan. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Who could now come to my help with another 4,000 men. With the arrival of the small army in Constantinople, I hired additional mercenaries to strengthen the army. And so began the attack on Pontus. My main army in Italy also made good progress, and so I was able to start the attack on Dacia as well. It is important that I keep an eye on all the fronts because, if I'm not careful, my plan could fail. The first city in Pontus had fallen, and the Pontic capital was under siege. The enemy army had now also arrived in Pontus. But through the mercenaries and the support of my allies, I now had a small military advantage. I was also able to take control of the Pontian capital. In general, the war was now more and more on my side. My main army was now in the process of occupying Dacia completely. My council and my vassals were also quite fond of Octavius by now. In the east it was now my goal to determine my supremacy and the course of the war through a decisive battle. In the meantime, however, there was a peasant uprising in Mediolanum, but that did not matter because my legions were finally available again. Yes! I can hire my legion. Re very good. And while the Praetorian Guard was on its way to the peasant uprising, the first battle started in the east. And I was able to win a first victory. The Praetorians easily defeated the peasant uprising and could now also take care of the complete conquest of Dacia, where I had recently succeeded in occupying the capital. By now, well trained enemy troops had gathered on the eastern front and I needed reinforcements from Dacia in order to not run in the risk of losing the next battle. Another great battle was about to begin, but first, incredible news reached the young emperor and his advisors. <gasps> the war's over! I... D <laughs> what? What happened? The time game had paid off with the death of Severus Amorian. His claim to the Western Roman Empire was also over, and with it, the war. With the end of the Western War, I could now send my entire army to the east. The first victories came quickly, and many cities were occupied or reconquered, until this war was also finally won. Oh God, yes! <laughs> Six years! And I managed it. I... <laughs> Honestly? Oh god, what a great feeling. 
victory. Finally, but my armies were not going home yet. One last small war to help one of my allies still had to be won. But of course, after everything that had happened, this was no longer a problem. And so, this war would also be won quickly after a few sieges. And the soldiers and legions could finally return home. And this is how it looked when the legions came home. And so, after a long time, there was peace in the Empire. With the help of his advisors, Octavius had actually managed to save the Empire from ruin. And so time passed, and through the good development, the Empire achieved prosperity again. Finally, it was time for Octavius to marry, and thus secure the loyalty of one of the powerful vassals. I also took care of the further expansion of the infrastructure to make the empire even more economically stable. And after years of securing, it was time to continue the reconquest of Britain. Nevertheless, I wanted to approach the whole thing carefully. And also the last Germanic tribes were driven out of the empire. In addition, I wanted to protect the capital better, and so the Theodosian walls were built, which had a few more advantages. Okay, let's construct the Theodosian walls. And so that Octavius would not have the same end as Diodorus II, I replaced my spy master with the best there was at the count. Now that Octavius had won the civil war and a few other small wars, there was only one logical thing to do. And as they say, history repeats itself. And so it comes that Octavius, who by the way was born in the same month as Augustus, restores the Roman Empire and claims the title Augustus for himself. 1st of January 474, the Roman Empire, ladies and gentlemen, was re-established. Let's you get the title Augustus, and this boy, I think we can all agree on this, this boy f***ing deserved this title. He deserves it. Let's go. Been recognized as the rightful ruler of the restored Roman Empire. But you will find out how a story continues next time.